So are you sure that adding oil to pasta water stops it from sticking? Or that searing meat seals in the juices? What if I told you these popular cooking tips are actually myths that could be ruining your recipes? For years, we've been told to follow these so-called rules in the kitchen, but today we're diving deep into the science to debunk 10 of the most common cooking myths, from pasta to meat, and even how you cook your veggies. We're about to show you why it's time to stop trusting these outdated tips and start improving your results in the kitchen. Let's start with a classic myth. Searing meat seals in the juices. You've probably heard this one countless times, and you might even be searing your steaks thinking you're locking in all that moisture. But here's the science. Searing doesn't seal in anything. What it actually does is create a flavorful crust on the outside of the meat through a chemical process called the Maillard reaction. This myth has roots in 19th century cooking, when chefs believed that searing formed a barrier to lock in moisture. The idea was popularized by renowned chemist Justus von Liebig, whose early experiments on meat led to this now debunked belief. When you sear meat, the high heat causes proteins and sugars to brown, which enhances flavor. But no matter how hot your pan is, juices are always going to escape during cooking. In fact, searing meat at too high a temperature can even cause it to lose more moisture. So while searing is great for flavor, it's not the key to juiciness. To get juicy meat, cook it at the right temperature and let it rest after cooking to redistribute the juices. That's the real secret. Many cooks also believe that you should only flip meat once during cooking to get the best results. But here's the truth, flipping meat multiple times while it cooks can actually help it cook more evenly and faster without sacrificing the crust or flavor. When you flip meat frequently, it allows the heat to distribute more evenly across the surface. This prevents one side from overcooking while the other catches up. Contrary to popular belief, flipping multiple times doesn't hurt the sear. In fact, it can help develop a more even crust. Instead of letting your meat sit on one side for too long, try flipping it more often to get a juicier, evenly cooked result. Use a thermometer to check for doneness, and don't worry about flipping too much. To get the best sear on your meat, you'll want a good cast iron skillet that holds heat evenly. If you're looking for one, we've linked some great options in the description below. Next up, the pasta myth. We've all heard that adding oil to your pasta water prevents the noodles from sticking. That stops the pasta from sticking together. But here's the truth. Oil floats on top of the water, and it never actually reaches the pasta, so it does nothing to stop your pasta from sticking together. This practice likely became common in home kitchens after pasta gained global popularity in the mid-20th century. Back then, home cooks were often working with smaller pots, leading to the assumption that oil could help prevent pasta clumping, when in reality, it doesn't solve the issue. The key to non-sticky pasta is actually stirring it during the first couple of minutes of cooking when the starches are being released. Save the oil for after cooking, when you can toss the noodles for extra flavor. Here's a myth that's not only wrong, but can actually be dangerous. Many people believe you need to rinse chicken before cooking to clean it, but in reality, rinsing raw chicken can spread harmful bacteria like salmonella all over your kitchen. The practice of rinsing chicken dates back to times when food safety standards weren't as strict as they are today. In the early 20th century, it was believed that washing poultry was necessary to clean it, but modern science shows that rinsing actually spreads bacteria. Cooking chicken to an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit or 70 degrees Celsius is what kills bacteria, not rinsing. So skip the rinse and focus on safely handling the raw meat. After handling chicken, wash your hands and clean surfaces with hot soapy water to prevent cross-contamination. And make sure to cook your chicken properly to keep it safe and delicious. You've probably heard that alcohol burns off completely when you cook with it, right? Well, that's not exactly true. Depending on how long you cook the dish, anywhere from 4 to 75% of the alcohol can still remain in the food. This misconception became common in the early 20th century, around the time of prohibition in the US Many people began to believe that cooking would remove all traces of alcohol, allowing them to enjoy recipes without the risk of consuming alcohol, but that's not entirely true. The amount of alcohol left depends on cooking time, temperature, and even the size of the pan. So while most of the alcohol evaporates, not all of it does, especially in shorter cooking times. If you want to reduce the alcohol in a dish, let it simmer for longer or use a wide pan to allow more evaporation. 
Or if you're cooking for someone who avoids alcohol, consider substitutes like broth or fruit juice. Ever heard the tip that baking soda makes vegetables greener? While it's true that baking soda can enhance the green color for a short time, it also breaks down the vegetable's cell walls and destroys nutrients. Over time, your veggies will become mushy and lose their nutritional value. This tip was popularized in mid-20th century home economics classes, where bright vegetables were seen as a sign of a well-cooked meal. However, science has since revealed that while baking soda can enhance color briefly, it damages the texture and nutrients of the vegetables. To keep your veggies green and nutritious, blanch them briefly and then shock them in ice water. This preserves both the color and texture without breaking down the nutrients. So by now we've busted five common cooking myths, but we're just getting started. Here's the big question. What if one of the most basic tips you've always believed, something you do in your kitchen every day isn't just a small mistake, but could actually be ruining your dishes? Keep watching because in just a minute, we'll get to a myth that's gonna completely change the way you cook. By the way, if you've heard any other cooking myths, let us know in the comments below. Who knows? We might bust your myth in a future video. And if you're enjoying these myth-busting tips, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and ring the bell so you never miss our next kitchen science breakdown. We've all been told that adding salt makes water boil faster. But in reality, the amount of salt you'd need to noticeably change the boiling point would make the water inedible. This myth likely arose from a misunderstanding of scientific principles related to boiling point elevation. The practice of salting water dates back centuries for flavor, but its effect on boiling speed is negligible. So add salt to your water, but don't expect it to boil faster. Instead, use a lid to speed up the boiling process. It's a common belief that you need to use the freshest eggs possible for cooking and baking, but did you know that slightly older eggs can actually give you better results in certain recipes? As eggs age, the whites thin and the air pocket inside increases, making them easier to peel when boiled. Fresh eggs are great for fried or poached eggs, but for hard boiling, older eggs are your best friend. In baking too, slightly older eggs can whip up fluffier meringues because of their looser structure. The preference for fresh eggs over older ones has deep roots in traditional cooking, especially before modern refrigeration. Fresh eggs were prized for their quality, but as refrigeration and storage methods evolved in the 20th century, it became clear that slightly older eggs can be better for specific tasks like boiling or baking thanks to changes in their structure over time. So don't throw out those older eggs just yet. Use fresh eggs for poaching or frying, but reach for the slightly older ones when you're hard boiling or baking. You'll get better, more consistent results. You might think that fresh vegetables are always better than frozen, but here's the truth. Frozen vegetables can actually be just as nutritious, if not more so, than their fresh counterparts. The preference for fresh over frozen vegetables became more pronounced in the mid-20th century when refrigeration and food preservation techniques were still evolving. However, today's flash freezing technology preserves vegetables at peak ripeness, making them nutritionally comparable to fresh produce, especially if they've traveled long distances to reach your grocery store. The key difference lies in the timing. Fresh vegetables begin losing their nutrients soon after they're harvested, and by the time they reach your kitchen, they may not be as nutrient-packed as they once were. Frozen vegetables, on the other hand, are picked at peak ripeness and flash frozen immediately, locking in their nutrients. So, when fresh veggies have traveled a long way or have been sitting in the fridge for a few days, frozen veggies can be just as good, if not better, nutritionally. When choosing vegetables, don't hesitate to reach for the frozen options. They're convenient, often cheaper, and can sometimes even be more nutritious than the fresh ones at the grocery store, especially when out of season. Marinating meat for hours or even overnight is often said to tenderize it and make it juicier, right? But in reality, marinades don't penetrate very deeply into the meat, only about a few millimeters on the surface. What they do is add flavor to the outer layer. The idea of marinating meat for tenderness dates back centuries to when acidic marinades were used to preserve and flavor meat. But if your marinade is too acidic and you leave it for too long, it can actually toughen the meat rather than tenderize it. The science behind this is simple. Marinades can break down proteins on the surface, but they can't reach deep inside the meat's fibers. If you want true tenderness, you're better off using mechanical tenderizing methods or brining. 
which allows salt to penetrate and retain moisture. Stick to marinating for flavor, not tenderness, and don't let it sit for too long. For tenderizing, try pounding the meat or using a salt brine for more consistent results. Ever avoided cooking mushrooms because they turn watery and soggy? The truth is, mushrooms do release a lot of moisture when they cook, but that doesn't mean they need to end up soggy. The key is in how you cook them. If you overcrowd your pan, the moisture released by the mushrooms can't evaporate quickly, causing them to steam rather than brown. The science behind this is simple. Mushrooms are made up of about 80-90% water, and as they heat, that water gets released. This myth likely stems from older cooking methods, where mushrooms were often steamed or cooked at low temperatures, leading to soggy results. Today, with high heat sautéing techniques, we know that mushrooms release moisture but can brown beautifully if cooked correctly. To avoid soggy mushrooms, give them space and let the heat do the work. You'll end up with beautifully browned mushrooms packed with flavor. Now you know the truth, and your cooking will be better for it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to get more science-backed cooking tips. If you found this video interesting, we've got a couple more lined up for you right here. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any of our upcoming deep dives into the world of traditional foods.